Welcome to Stave Draws. I'm Stave the Groot, a Dutch artist. And in this video series, I'm going to explain how I made the exhibition We Gaan Naar Zandvoort possible. I've painted uh, eight paintings uh, of the past and the present. And the exhibition is about the journey um, from Amsterdam to Zandvoort. And Zandvoort is a beach town in the Netherlands. And it's a mirrored exhibition, so I painted four paintings from the past and four paintings uh, from the present. And at the end, I had to paint the Panorama Zandvoort, which is the biggest painting I ever did. But in this uh, video series, I'm just going to uh, go over uh, the beginning and you know how to uh, gather all the information and how to make an exhibition for a museum. And because this is a very big exhibition, uh, we needed to have funds and sponsors to make it possible because we needed um, a lot of technique and displays and also short throw beamers. So I started out uh, making the concept of uh, the exhibition and I have to go uh, back to October 2017. I went to the Zandvoort Museum uh, and they had a, a comics exhibition with uh, Dutch comic artists and really loved the exhibition and I got a chance to talk to the director of the museum and she just saw a, a wonderful exhibition in, in Italy and it had a lot of uh, projections on screens and I already played with the idea to make a time-lapse video and you've seen a lot of time-lapse videos on my channel but to make it a narrative time-lapse video so that you tell something and then you see that it's going to be painted and they have a very large room in the middle of the museum and I came up with the idea to paint a panorama of uh, Zandvoort Beach and also of all the hotels and also the beach and uh, people that were staying on the beach and I showed some of my uh, work because I then was working on an exhibition which is called Look Up Harlem they were all uh, realistic paintings of the city I work and live in uh, in Haarlem and I already made uh, a documentary about that and uh, I'm just going to put a link down below so that you can uh, see that video. So I showed some of my work and she really got excited and gave it a go and after that um, we needed to find uh, or we needed to build a team to get all the funds and sponsors and before you do that, you have to have um, a representation or uh, what they call uh, is a, a bid book so that you can, you know, show what the actual uh, exhibition would look like. So I first made the bid book and also did the design of the poster. And it was a year ago, so I had to do a lot of research at that time and also had to find uh, the right style you know to paint all of the paintings I was going to do so I planned out um, the entire exhibition for the bit book and I'm just going to show you the bit book and uh, there you can see what it would actually look like and the great thing about you know doing a bit book is that you really need to think and focus on what you're going to tell and how you're going to tell it so a year ago, I already knew uh, what was needed, you know, to make this exhibition possible and how many paintings I had to do. And I also wanted to make a, a documentary because the, the eight paintings I was doing were just um, stolen moments. That's what I uh, like to call them. Uh, it's just a frame in time but I also made a, a video documentary of the journey with the tram and also the journey by train now so it's a mirrored exhibition for the bit book I also had to design the poster and in this video I'm just going to explain how I uh, made the poster 
Museum exhibitions have to be planned a year beforehand. At the beginning of the year, a museum will post an agenda of all the exhibitions of that year. Therefore, you need an image that represents the exhibition. Most of the time, that is a poster. In the design of the poster, I also needed to set the painting style of the entire exhibition and make an image that would represent the concept as well. A mirrored story of past and present. For designing a poster, you need other skills than just painting an image. It's all about communication and an idea and attract people to visit the exhibition. There is a hierarchy of elements that are important. Where is it? What's the title? Who is it by? And when does it take place? I first started out trying out some different kind of concepts on how to place all of the elements. I zoomed out the canvas and made several layouts of all the elements. The exhibition is about the past and present. It's about traveling by tram and train to the beach. The basic concept I came up with was a family walking onto the beach from two different eras. On the left a mother with two children from 1918 and on the right a father with a child on his shoulders pointing to the sea. I also came up with a color scheme for the entire poster. The exhibition was planned from 16 November 2018 until the 10th of March 2019. This is in the winter time in the Netherlands and we have a lot of rain and not much sun. The colors needed to be bright to stand out. I used the colors of the logo of Zandvoort village, that's yellow and blue. There are also the colors of the blue tram and the train. The first element on the poster needed to be the museum. Where is it? So I treated it a bit like an old movie poster. Zandvoort Museum presents. I came up with the title We gaan naar Zandvoort, we're going to Zandvoort of an old song that's called We gaan naar Zandvoort by de Zee by a Dutch artist Louis Davids. It's still a very popular song and it also reflects the journey from Amsterdam to Zandvoort. In the title is also the name of the town the museum is at. And it's a catchy and dynamic title. Then I made an undertitle to tell what it's all about. A digitale reis van verleden naar heden. A digital journey from past to present. Then the credit who made the exhibition. Door Stefan de Groot by Stefan de Groot. Then when does it take place? At the time I only knew the start date of the exhibition. 16 November 2018. And finally the logo of the museum and address and opening hours. In order to make the painting, I needed to set the style of all the painting I had to make later. So I first tried out several techniques. I already knew that I wanted the painting of the Panorama Zandvoort to be in an impressionistic style. I got a lot of inspiration by one Dutch painter in particular, Isaac Israels. I made several studies of his works to get comfortable with the style. Israels painted a lot of images of the beach, so that was a good reference. The poster I painted in parts. I first painted the background of a path that leads down to the beach, with wooden poles to get a more dynamic feel. I used more saturated colors to make everything pop out more. Then I painted the woman and girl from 1918. I had to do research of the type of clothing they were wearing in 1918. In the layout I also had a boy in the painting, but that ruined the concept of the exhibition. Everything needed to be mirrored. Past versus present and female versus male. Like a yin yang concept. I never painted humans in a realistic style so I needed to learn that fast. The four characters are backlit from the sun, so that it creates a rim light to make them pop out more. So the back of the characters are in shadow. When you paint shadows, you lose a lot of detail and saturation. For the man and the child, I used a lot of photo reference to draw the boy. And for the man, I used myself as the model. 
In another canvas I drew and painted the tram and the train, also using reference pictures. In the design you have two perspectives, one that goes in and one that goes out. All of these elements I exported to my computer and did the composite in Photoshop. Posters are placed in Abris, they are very large posters. Procreate has a limit on how big you can paint an image. So I had to paint all the elements in different canvases. It's always good to have characters and backgrounds in separate layers. This way you can move them around to make a better composition. You can also use these separate objects for other purposes. I used parts of this painting as a backdrop for the bitbook. When you use typography it's best not to use too many different fonts. I had to find a good font to reflect the era. I used an Art Deco font for the title and another one for the undertitle. If you have more elaborate fonts you will get a whole set of styles within that font. The undertitle had a regular and bold font, so I used these in the poster. When I finished the design of the poster, I used it in the bitbook, but also for advertising. The color scheme and the fonts became the house style for all the other communication. It was used as a poster in Abris, but also for the promotion on sites and social media. For the internet, most of the ads are in landscape mode, so I also made designs for that, using the same fonts and colors. I also made an ad on the back of a bus, 80, but with the panorama Zandvoort, but still using the same fonts and colors. Fun fact about this bus is that it now follows the same route the old tram used to follow going from Amsterdam to Zandvoort, and vice versa. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because each time I upload a new video, you get a notification. Next week I will post a video about the making of uh, this painting and that's Amsterdam in 1904. So stay tuned. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles!